All right, hey everybody. Welcome back to Pencil Stash. We are going to continue in Joanna Basford's Worlds of Wonder, and we're gonna continue coloring this page. Now, I thought that it would be really fun to kind of take each of these little bird vignettes, kind of one week at a time. So this is the one that I did last week. If you missed it, I will leave it up here as well as down below in the description. You're welcome to go back and look. And today, we're not gonna go linear because why would that make sense? We're actually gonna jump down to this one because I think that this is a robin. And if you guys watched last week's video, I have these little baby cheap cheap robins that built a nest right outside my front door. And just this week, they actually grew up, they flew the coop, and I actually got to see one fly away. They look like little fuzzy round tennis balls. It was absolutely adorable. And I already kind of miss them. They haven't come back yet. I think they're off, you know, living their own lives, but um, they're adorable. So I thought that we could kind of jump down to this one. And the other thing that I really wanted to do, cause I, I didn't really do it on this one. And I really wanted to kind of work out my color palette first before we jump in, you know, this is kind of the plan. With this one, I knew I wanted a cardinal, obviously, you know, colors sort of predetermined. I knew I wanted my leaves green, but then it kind of was, you know, go with the flow, seat of my pants kind of kind of process. And I like the way that it turned out. It wasn't bad, but I definitely wish I had put a little bit more thought into the colors. And so I already did that with this one. So let's put this off to the side. And what I decided was to kind of go with a very autumn inspired kind of theme. Um, I was really drawn to some of these kind of brown reds. I've got like henna and chestnut. And then I've got some really pretty like golden yellows, some really lovely autumn oranges, and then a ton of browns. I'm not quite sure like if I'm gonna use all of these yet. This is probably a little bit, you know, overkill, but I wanted to pull the colors that I at least kind of knew would go together, at least, you know, kind of played well together so that I would have some to draw from right at hand. And that's what I like to do with this white tray. Definitely like to keep this right by my side. Instead of constantly having to go into my larger sort of pencil stash over here, I like to pull colors and just have them right here at my disposal. That also helps, like if I am kind of seat of, seat of my pants, I will add to this tray. And so I can always sort of go back and use the same colors without having to remember which ones they were, repull them, it's a whole thing. So we're gonna use these and let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do is the Robin, just because it, it'll sort of predetermine everything else around him. So I really wanna go very traditional. This is kind of what I did on the Cardinal here. We can, you know, have some liberties and whatnot, but I definitely wanna go a little bit traditional. So the first thing I did was actually pull out my iPad and I just typed Robin into Pinterest. And of course I got this, which is not what I was looking for, but this is definitely what I was looking for. Now, this is a very kind of traditional Robin that I see here in the Midwest. Very, you know, dark back, very bright kind of orangey red uh, breast. Um, but I actually saw some of these Robins here. I've never seen these. These must be some, oh, it says Garden Robin. I don't know if I've ever seen one of those, but I think it's just beautiful. And it has a little bit of, I think just like a softer color palette. And I was kind of drawn to this one. So I think that this might be something that we kind of draw some inspiration from with just a little bit of this softer palette. And yeah, I'm definitely getting a lot of these. It's kind of funny because I've never seen one of those here. Must not be a Midwest thing. All right, so the actual Robin here is kind of hiding a little bit of that area that will be orange, but I think we can definitely take advantage of some of the area around the eyes and then down the breast here. So let's start with, I kind of want to start with the sunburst yellow just to give a little bit of beautiful highlight before we go in and add our oranges. So I'm just going to put this in here a little bit. And again, I'm just kind of following the inspiration photo that has a little bit of this kind of golden hue. 
Now I've got Crayola Yellow Orange. And this one is a little bit more of a transitional color between that yellow and the orange that's very appropriately named. And I'm just going to sort of decide exactly where the edge of the orange is going to be. Oh, that's pretty. So when I actually kind of go into the yellow area a little bit, it creates a really lovely, lovely color. This is what I love about layering. Like I don't just have, you know, the Prismacolor set available to me or the Crayola color set to me. I have kind of the infinite, you know, rainbow of colors that you can get from layering. And it just creates something entirely new. And it's a lot of fun to experiment with. And I'm gonna leave this a little bit erratic here at the edges, just because that is very much how the feathers kind of end on our actual robin. And then we'll kind of transition that out. All right, let's go into a little bit deeper of an orange. I like this pale vermilion color, let's see. Maybe around his face a little bit. I'm kind of just following the, the uh, inspiration photo in terms of like placement of like lighter colors, darker colors. And instead of using my typical kind of curly cue brush strokes, I'm actually trying to use uh, like um, really straight back and forth just to kind of mimic a little bit of that um, feathery texture. All right, well, we're not gonna use this one because this one is not cooperating. Um, what I might do is maybe add just a little bit of this henna color. It's definitely on like the reddish brown side, but I think it might actually complement just some areas that I want to deepen a little bit here. Let's go in with cadmium orange hue. And I'm just going to go in and just kind of go over this yellow area just really lightly. Just so that that brightness still comes through, but it just reads it as a little bit more orange. And feather a little bit more around the face. I'm going to go back to henna and just add just a little bit more, kind of just some, some feathery kind of notes here with just some really quick little little lines just to give a little bit of texture. And I'm not gonna do this all over, but just, just a little bit. All right, now if we look at our Robin, it has a very, and of course it's, there we go. And if we look at our Robin, it has a very sort of gray tone here underneath the wing and then just a little bit on top of uh, his head. So I think we're gonna try to add that in as well. So let's add a little bit of this cool gray 20%. This is a Prisma color. And this is just gonna be a very light uh, sort of overall layer. And I am going to bring it into the orange just a little bit, but I don't wanna get rid of those feathering marks. So I'm just using really light pressure but I'm gonna cover the whole head in this gray and then I'll add to it. And I'm also going to do like a little bit on the breast here, a little bit underneath the underbelly, and then definitely just a little bit on this section here, which, is that her wing? Yeah, that's her wing. Okay, we'll just leave it here then. All right, now what I wanna do is actually bring in some of these kind of warm coppery tones into the top of her head and into kind of her back here. And then just a little bit of that texture there underneath. And we're going to use antique brass for that. And very similar to what I was kind of doing before, I'm just gonna go in right over top of the gray and just add this in. It's a very subtle light brown. And I think it's gonna give us like just that right kind of tone that we want. 
And I'm just doing a very light layer, but now with the same pencil, I'm gonna go in and just add some more of those same little kind of feathery marks. There we go. And I'll do the same on the underbelly. I'm gonna kind of focus it up here where the orange kind of transitions into the gray. Make it a little bit muddy. And then I'll just kind of let it go to just gray underneath. Now the other thing that I wanna do just because it's bugging me is I am gonna fill in her eye and her beak. And the inspiration photo definitely has, or reference photo, definitely has dark eyes and a dark beak. And the one thing I do like to do there, just hopefully my white, yep, my white's cooperating today. Love it. All right, next is this beautiful kind of warm, brown, light brown kind of wing pattern. I'm gonna bring in a couple of colors from the palette that I already pulled. I think I want like a little bit of khaki. Almond might be too light. I definitely want some tan, definitely some copper. And I, I'm, I purposely pulled Crayolas for this because I wanted really, really light layers. The Prism colors have a tendency to be super saturated just because they have just more pigment in them. And I actually wanted less pigment. So if you guys are thinking I'm crazy for using Crayolas, it's actually very strategic. Um, I actually really like using these for when I want just a little, little bit of color. And I'll be using these uh, to at least get down like the first couple layers here. So I'm gonna start light. Let's start with khaki. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna do this. It's gonna be like a lot of layers and it's probably not really worth stressing about. So I'm just gonna put down kind of an overall like haphazard layer here. Not gonna stress. And then let's see. And then I can kind of go in with copper and just kind of refine it. And each layer, each color that I kind of put in is just gonna be an opportunity to just go in and kind of give some of these feather layers a little bit of refinement. Go over the gray a little bit. I definitely want this area a little bit lighter and then it'll sort of go up to dark. Now let's add in some tan. I really like the very warm kind of quality that this color adds. This is actually one of my favorite Crayolas. And I'm not doing every, every single feather exactly the same. I'm actually trying to kind of vary it a little bit, just so that it just kind of bounces around a little bit and is less predictable. Now with taupe, I'm gonna go in and add kind of one final light layer before I go in with my dark. And this one's a little bit more on the Kind of trending towards dark side, but it's still relatively light. It's like Anakin before he like officially turned to the dark side. And once in a while I'll just kind of go in and do like a dark feather. See how I'm just kind of varying these a little bit? It's just gonna all kind of play into the overall finished product. This one was definitely a winner. All right, now I just want to go in with a dark browns and a light brown. Maybe I'll do light brown just because her wings are still super light and I definitely want to keep that, but I do want to add in just a little bit of kind of varied, like deeper tones. So I'll start with this and kind of see where it takes me. And then if I need to, I can bring in the, the darker ones. All right, that got us about 90% of the way there, but now I'm going to use dark brown just to add just a little bit of deeper, darker color in just a couple of places. And I'm still gonna try to add some of those like little feathery kind of, I keep calling them brush strokes, but pencil strokes, just to uh, still give the illusion that our bird has feathers. And I'm actually using very light pressure, but I am trying to just keep a nice kind of firm point there we go. I like how that tail came out. And then I'm just gonna sort of have them 
kind of trail off a little bit. All right. I love that. That's good. Okay. I'm very, very happy with that. So let's call her done for now. And I definitely want to move into the leaves. And I kind of want those to be very autumn inspired, like very kind of these like yellowy oranges and browns. And then I think I want to do these little berries in maybe some of these like hennas and like maybe a little bit of like raspberry reds. I think that'll look pretty. Oh, and I already added some right there. <laughs> um, let's see here. So let's start with that then since I already started and I'm going to use peach and I'm just going to put just a little bit of this color kind of into like a highlighty kind of spot here. And then I'll use henna to build around it. And I did a fairly large area and I like to start large with that highlight and then add around it so that I can move into that space and sort of kind of shrink it a little bit as I go. And it helps to blend. And I'm using a little bit of like varied pressure here, like some light, some dark. And I'm just doing that in order to get a little bit of a different color as we move towards that highlight. That looks great. Perfect. And then I might even go back in with peach and just go right over that. All right, these came out really nice. And I just want to go in with a little bit of this chestnut color just along some of these edges just to maybe drive home some shadows. That works. It didn't need too much. All right, now I want to jump to the leaves and I think just to simplify things a little bit, I think I want to use the majority of my time with maybe some of these yellows and then some of the kind of more like coppery autumny browns, just so that our Robin can kind of maintain this like orange beautifulness. I don't want to compete too much with it. So I'm not going to do every single, oh, the other thing, hang on, hang on one second. I forgot. I want to do the same thing that I did last time where I just kind of poke some of these leaves out beyond the frame. There aren't really too many opportunities to do that. Maybe just with this one here at the top. So I'm going to do that. So then I'll go in with my Sharpie to mimic the line weight. And I'm also just going to connect some more of these dots to make it look like it was intentional. And then to just get rid of a little bit of that pencil, the Sharpie is dry and I'm just going to erase the pencil. It's like it was never there. All right, now let's get back to yellows. And this one is yellow ochre Prismacolor. And let's do this little guy. I'm just gonna put a little bit of yellow here at the tip and maybe just down one side. And then with this, this is with goldenrod. I'll just create a little bit of overlap, a little bit of edging. And I'm going very light because actually these two are not similar. I mean, I mean, they're similar, but there's actually a lot more difference in the tone here than I anticipated. So I'm just going to go very lightly over that. And then I think I'm going to take the light brown and very lightly just go over the rest of this. And this is just kind of the base, the base coat. Then with dark brown, I can go in and just edge this out a little bit. We're getting some of these little corners here. And with this, I'm just using very light pressure. And then, let's see, I'm going to use the light ochre again and just sort of help some of these areas out. And then with this copper color, help to blend some of these areas at the bottom. And then with beaver, I'm just going to kind of highlight the veins here just a little bit. 
And I also like leaves when they are a little bit imperfect. So I'm just gonna put some little dots in the areas that are yellow. Okay, that's good. I don't wanna torture it too much. But then I will do a very similar technique on the rest. Alright, I have finished coloring, at least what's kind of already been laid out for us. And now I would like to do something in the background. And I don't just want to do just like a plain uh, color. I kind of want to do maybe some stripes at an angle in like varying widths. And I think I want to use gray. So I actually have a little ruler. And I worry that if I do it this way, it will kind of interfere with the tail. So I think I might go this way just for a little bit of visual interest. And I am going to use the color that I intend to use, but I'm going to do, and I am going to just do some lines. And I, again, I don't want to just make them the width of the colored pencil. I'm going to actually fill in some of these spaces. All right, here's the background. I do really like how that came out. I think that the gray works well. It's sort of a cool color against a lot of these warm ones. And now I think I wanna do one more thing. And I wanna do a little bit of a frame around this, but instead of just doing something right up against it, I'm gonna sort of come offset and I'm going to use a pencil and I'm going to just draw in something here at the bottom just for fun, and I am going to use pencil, and I am just going to do a nice little motif here. Oh, I don't like that one. Hang on. And instead of a solid line around it, I think I'm going to do a dashed line, and I'm going to try to just sort of attach these here and just maintain sort of an equidistant circumference around the edge. And the nice thing about doing this in pencil, because I know I'm going to erase it, but the nice thing about doing this in pencil is that when I go back in with the fine liner, I will actually be able to just sort of fix some of these little errors. This is really kind of a guideline in order to give myself something to follow, almost like a pattern to trace. And if I don't like the line that I end up with, I just draw a different one. All right, so that is that. Now I'm gonna take my Sharpie fine liner, which is exactly what I used over here. And I'm going to draw in these little sort of petal shapes. They look like little duck feet. Um, but these little petal shapes first. See, and I changed the shape a little bit. I didn't have to follow the pencil line exactly. I was able to just use it as a guideline and I'm gonna do the same around the circle. And I'm actually going to turn this so that I am always sort of consistently, you know, at the same angle as I go. Now we'll take our eraser and erase some of these pencil lines. See, and they just completely disappear. I am going to be careful though around the colored pencil because this will erase colored pencil. So I'm just going to keep it at an angle where I can see. Perfect. Now, I do want to take a little bit of this uh, sort of henna color and then move it down over here. I really liked this and I kind of wanted a little bit more of it. So that was sort of the genesis of these little, these little petal shapes. And we're just going to sort of mimic what was over there, over here. And here is week two, my pretty little Robin. I definitely like how this came out. I love the color scheme. It was definitely something that I appreciated doing kind of ahead of time. 
Um, I really like the orange. I think it definitely kind of stands out from the page. And I also really like the sort of lighter hand on the Robin's coloring. Like I said, I'm kind of used to the darker Robins, um, but I really like this one. I think it came out really cute. I like how I balanced um, out this beautiful henna color. And overall, it was just a really fun exercise. So thank you so much for joining me. I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new and want to be updated when I upload new content. And in the meantime, happy coloring. Bye guys.